As Meghan and Harry land in the UK, royal insiders hit back at the tragic and delusional couple's sniping and reveal the toll it is taking on the Queen, 96, who resents waiting for the next nuclear bomb. The festering transatlantic Cold War between the Windsors and the Sussexes turned hot today as palace insiders hit back at a delusional Meghan and Harry's unsustainable sniping at the monarchy and revealed the toll it is taking on the Queen. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex opened up a new rift in their feud with the royal family this week when former Suits actress Meghan let off another round of truth bombs in her new Spotify podcast and an astonishing U.S. interview where she said she had been compared to South African hero Nelson Mandela and claimed Harry had lost his father Charles during Megxit. Sources in royal circles have now hit back at the couple, branding their tirades against life as working royals delusional and tragic and sensationally suggesting that they rail against the system as much as they still do even after Mexit to sustain public and therefore commercial interest in their brand. One disgruntled palace insider told the Sunday Times everyone hoped they would go off to be financially independent, pursue their philanthropic endeavors and be happy, and that is going their own way. They might no longer feel the need to rail against the system as much as they still do. But then the star power of them requires an association with the royal family, and the fuel on those flames is the family discord. Sources also rubbished Meghan's claim South Africa celebrated her wedding like they had Mandela's release in her interview with the magazine The Cut, raging. The whole thing is just staggering. Nelson Mandela, Gandhi next. There are no words for all that deception and tragedy. They also said the Queen, who is now 96 and has withdrawn from many public events in recent months over concerns about her health, insists she doesn't want to be tied down and is always on the lookout for the next nuclear bomb. Waiting for, and Charles' friends told the newspaper that he'd been in a slump for him after his relationship partially healed when he spent time with Harry, Meghan, and his grandchildren Archie and Lilibet at the Platinum Anniversary celebrations in June. He said the provocation continued to be painful. Over the past two years there has been a constant stream of very defensive statements about men who cannot defend themselves against couples they clearly love and miss. This is very difficult on a personal level. I love you dearly. He is completely confused as to why his son thinks this is the correct way to manage family relationships. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's taunts weren't accepted by the monarchy. Officials inside the palace argued, with many criticizing the couple by publicly exposing how bad it is to be king. In particular, questioned what Meghan was trying to achieve. In a broad 6,000-word interview with The Cut, Meghan said that their presence alone would cause her and Harry to disrupt the dynamics of the hierarchy before stepping down as senior working royals. She also said it takes a lot of effort for her to forgive, hinting that she can say anything after she hasn't signed a non-disclosure agreement with the royal family. The couple's actions also appear to contradict public statements they made after reaching an agreement to step back from royal life with the Queen in January 2020. At the so-called Sandringham Summit, Harry gave up his military appointment and his public funding was stopped so he could go to the U.S., where he signed a multi-million pound deal with Spotify and Netflix. When the Mail Online asked about the Palace Insider's remarks, their communications staff declined to comment. A Sussex's spokesman did not immediately respond to our inquiries. Meanwhile, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex may be back in the UK for the first time since returning to the Queen's Platinum her jubilee. Last night, it was reported that the couple had already met up on Hello on Saturday morning. Harry and Meghan will attend the Youth Summit in Manchester tomorrow and the Wellchild Awards in London on Thursday before flying to Germany to celebrate the one-year countdown to the Invictus Games. We have no plans to meet Prince William and Mrs. Kate, but we are staying just a few hundred yards away. They were due to arrive on Saturday using Frogmore Cottage, a Windsor home, as a base, but no arrival date was confirmed. The Sunday Times reports that Her Majesty is unlikely to visit the Queen of Balmoral, where sources say she had a busy summer with many visitors and picnics. After the Sussexes' relationship with the rest of the royal family fell apart, there are no plans to travel the 90 meters to Adelaide Cottage so that the brothers can be reunited. There are concerns that the couple could bring a film crew to the UK as part of a $100 million Netflix deal, royal sources say. Trust is a big issue, especially right now. The source said, separately, the Queen has repeatedly stated that the Sussexes are very much loved by the royal family. However, a source told the Sunday Times, 
The couple's visit to the UK follows an impassioned interview with Meghan, in which she claims the South African cast of The Lion King told her, Harry. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex attended the star-studded premiere of Disney's remake of him in July 2019, which was attended by big names like Beyonce and Jay-Z. I just had Archie. It was such a cruel chapter. I was afraid to go outside, she said in an interview, claiming the South African performer pulled her aside. He looked at me and was like a light. When you married into this family, we rejoiced in the streets as much as when Mandela was released from prison. The Duchess of Sussex declined to name the performers. The actor, who claims to be the only South African in the live-action The Lion King movie, claims he never actually met Meghan Markle. Dr. John Kenny said earlier this week after the Duchess of Sussex used an interview with her to hint that the 2018 royal wedding sparked celebrations in South Africa to mark the release of his friend Madiba, said he believed the Duchess of Sussex made a fake, legendary anti-apartheid leader. He said Mandela's journey to freedom after her 27 years was a breakthrough moment, and that Mandela's marriage to Prince Harry was no big deal in South Africa. He added that he cannot say the two events at the same time. You can. I'm not quite sure where you were when Meghan married Harry, but Dr. Kenny, a veteran of the Royal Shakespeare Company and voice of the mandrel shaman Rafiki, told the Mail Online that he was the only South African in the Disney film to have never met Meghan, nor had she attended the UK premiere. He said he did not attend the only other South African. He said was Lebo M, the composer who scored The Lion King alongside Hans Zimmer. However, Lebo M was not in attendance. I never met Meghan Markle. It seems like a failure on her part. I have never met the Duchess. I was the only South African member of the cast and did not attend the London premiere. The couple's visit to the UK follows an impassioned interview with Meghan, in which she claims the South African cast of The Lion King told her, Harry, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex attended the star-studded premiere of Disney's remake of him in July 2019, which was attended by big names like Beyonce and Jay-Z. I just had Archie. It was such a cruel chapter. I was afraid to go outside, she said in an interview, claiming the South African performer pulled her aside. He looked at me and was like a light. When you married into this family, we rejoiced in the streets as much as when Mandela was released from prison. The Duchess of Sussex declined to name the performers. The actor, who claims to be the only South African in the live-action The Lion King movie, claims he never actually met Meghan Markle. Dr. John Kenny said earlier this week after the Duchess of Sussex used an interview with her to hint that the 2018 royal wedding sparked celebrations in South Africa to mark the release of his friend Madiba, said he believed the Duchess of Sussex made a fake, legendary anti-apartheid leader. He said Mandela's journey to freedom after her 27 years was a breakthrough moment, and that Mandela's marriage to Prince Harry was no big deal in South Africa. He added that he cannot say the two events at the same time. You can. I'm not quite sure where you were when Meghan married Harry, but Dr. Kenny, a veteran of the Royal Shakespeare Company and voice of the mandrel shaman Rafiki, told the Mail Online that he was the only South African in the Disney film to have never met Meghan, nor had she attended the UK premiere. He said he did not attend. The only other South African, he said, was Lebo M, the composer who scored The Lion King alongside Hans Zimmer. However, Lebo M was not in attendance. I never met Meghan Markle. It seems like a failure on her part. I have never met the Duchess. I was the only South African member of the cast and did not attend the London premiere. This line is a direct quote from Meghan's interview with Allison and, as a general rule, does not comment on or infer the intentions of sources other than the text of the article, fleeing the UK over negative media coverage, including the £2.40 and renovation of Frogmore Cottage. As they were planning their departure, Meghan asked the royal family whether they could work for the monarchy and earn their own money, and whether they were willing to live in a Commonwealth country to support the transition. But she told an interviewer, for some reason, I wasn't allowed to do that, even though some other family members are doing exactly that. In fact, other civil servants are not allowed to perform their official duties and earn their own money at the same time. There are fears that the Sussexes are stepping up their media presence and looking to publish Harry's long-awaited memoir, Bomb Appears. In a recent interview, Duchess Meghan has more to say about life in the royal family, but hinted that she's still healing. She said, Interestingly, I didn't have to sign anything that prevented me from speaking. I can speak about my entire experience and choose not to speak. Buckingham Palace declined to comment.
The Mail on Sunday has revealed that this week's meeting with the Queen and the new Prime Minister will go ahead as usual despite her travel issues. Her concerns were voiced after Prince Charles was unable to represent her at yesterday's meeting of her beloved Bremer, but insiders said she stayed home to make sure she was ready to welcome the 15th Prime Minister to Balmoral on Tuesday. It's the first time the Queen has had a new Prime Minister, but her deal is for BP to come to Balmoral, an insider said. Despite her travel problems, the Queen is said to have insisted Prince Charles will not attend the ceremony, but that means Her Majesty thought it wiser to rest yesterday. Instead, Charles, known in Scotland as Duke of Rothesay, stood in for his mother at the Highland Games. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex landed in the UK yesterday, but are not planning to visit the Queen of Scotland. Meghan Markle will give a speech tomorrow at the opening of the One Young World Summit in Manchester. The couple will fly to Dusseldorf to watch the countdown to next year's Invictus Games. On Tuesday, Boris Johnson, who is stepping down after three years at No. 10, will first travel to meet the Queen, after which the monarch will have a private audience with the new Prime Minister in a drawing room at Balmoral. Images are posted, but videos are not. And the next day, a virtual Privy Council meeting is scheduled via video call. The new setting for the Kiss Hands conference was decided to save the 96-year-old monarch the 1,000-mile journey to and from Buckingham Palace. At yesterday's gathering of Bremer, the Prince of Wales used secateurs to cut Heather's ropes to unveil a new 80,000 pounds archway to mark the Queen's platinum her jubilee year. I was. Charles and Camilla joined in the applause when host Robert Levy said, I miss her. The Queen was resting in nearby Balmoral. Bremer Royal Highlands Society President Peter Fraser said, We are saddened, but we understood that the Queen, who had been a venerable patron for 70 years, would not be able to come. Charles, in a kilt, and Camilla, in a jacket and hat, later watched the contestants throw logs, the game at Bremer being held since his 1832. Other Balmoral traditions continue as normal. Mail on Sunday understands that Gilly's ball will move on, even if the Queen isn't in attendance.